time. Dear judges, thank you for being here. I would like to share with you one thought that I'm very excited about and which I've been exploring for over a year. What is more important, flavor or a tactile experience? Watching all the new trends in our industry, I noticed that we are mainly focused on the flavor of the coffee. My main intention working as a barista is to make the coffee pleasant experience for my customers. I realized that whether the coffee is pleasant to drink or not depends mainly on the tactile qualities and that will be my focus for today. So let me show you how we approached creating the best possible tactile experience in this particular coffee. The cards in front of you will be your guide as they represent the key moments of the process that we will reveal together. It all starts in San Cayetano Farm, in San Juan de la China region of Colombia, where Milton Monroy produced his naturally processed Gesha variety, as you can see on the card on your board. It was an amazing coffee, full of flavors, but he wanted to improve the texture and mouthfeel. So for this special lot, he partnered with Elias from El Vergel Farm and together perfected the processing and drying, which resulted in this coffee called Gesha Clouds. Judges, I will ask you to take the card from the top of your deck and place it on the board. They decided to anaerobically ferment this coffee for 72 hours and made an important decision to elevate the tactile through extended drying, which took almost 30 days, by enclosing the sherries in the sealed bags throughout various stages of the moisture content and putting them in the dark, they also managed to capture the volatile compounds in the cherries. And they discovered that this technique had a direct impact on the smoother texture and rounded body of the coffee. Judges, the recipe I'm using for all my drinks is 20 grams in and 43 grams out in about 27 seconds. Creating a pleasant tactile of espresso is always a challenge. Smooth texture usually comes at the cost of weak body or low extraction. Judges, I will ask you to place another card on your board. After a lot of experimenting, I found the answer for that in low extraction temperatures. Because lowering the group temperature increases the espresso flow rate in the first half of the extraction mainly due to low resistance in the coffee bed. This can lead to less astringent notes, and as I found out, hence to lower channeling possibilities, it can also create much smoother and complex texture. So today, I'm using a temperature of 90.5 degrees of Celsius. Lowering the temperature also lowers the extraction a bit, which we managed to compensate during the roasting which I'll be telling you about very soon. And now, judges, let's mark down the experience you're going to get. You can expect in your espresso floral-driven cup with notes of chamomile, papaya, and passion fruit with long-lasting pink grapefruit in aftertaste. It has medium thickness, but for me, the most interesting part of this espresso is the texture, which is coating, sticky, and in a second sip, it turns more into juicy. Please, judges, first evaluate the crema, then stir the espresso five times to give it a time to cool down a bit, and the small cups in front of you are for your use spoons. And please enjoy. There you go. Please enjoy. One for you. Please enjoy. One for you. Please enjoy. And last one for you. Please enjoy.
judges. If you are ready, you can place another card on your board. We roasted this coffee 21 days ago on the Stronghold machine in 600 grams batch size. We decided to give the bean the maximum heat at the beginning and then cut it rapidly during the drying phase to ensure that the bean got all the energy it needed to slowly release it during the roast and also to prolong the browning phase in the middle. This resulted in the ending of 18.9% development time ratio and it resulted, sorry, and we found out that this allowed us to preserve the coffee aromatics and also to achieve higher solubility, which is necessary for my extraction approach to find the best tactile of this coffee. Judges, we are moving to the milk beverage, which is all about the tactile. And I will ask you to place another card on your board. I wanted to give the milk tactile the same attention as we gave to the coffee. So I decided to use a partially condensed milk made in Czech Republic. They use innovative technology that removes part of milk's water content while controlling the ratio between the fats and the proteins, keeping the proteins a little bit higher than the fats. This is the opposite of the regular milk and it creates much better texture without overpowering the coffee. Total volume of my milk beverage is 110 milliliters with a ratio of one part of coffee and four parts of milk. And now, let's write down the taste and tactile experience. You will get notes of floral honey, vanilla, and hints of strawberries. We have aftertaste of Baker's chocolate. And the cup is dominated by creamy texture and high thickness. Please judges, stir it three times before drinking to properly incorporate the foam. And please enjoy. One for you, please enjoy. And just to be sure, once again, you will get notes of floral honey, vanilla, and hints of strawberries with aftertaste of Baker's chocolate. And as I said, the cup is dominated by creamy mouthfeel and high thickness. There you go, please enjoy. And one for you, please enjoy. Judges, I wanted to apply all the knowledge I've gathered from the people who contributed to this amazing coffee into my signature beverage. In three steps that correspond to the key moments of our journey, I will elevate the taste of my drink base by enhancing the tactile quality of it. We will start with four espressos that I prepared at the beginning and let them cool down. 
to support the ripe fruit sweetness from my coffee, I'm adding 40 grams of sherry puree, which I strained and blended with white sugar in a ratio of two parts of sherry puree and one part of sugar. To highlight the floral and citrusy notes, I'm adding 30 grams of strained tangerine juice. And to get more balanced and complex flavor profile, I'm also adding one gram of saline solution, made from five grams of salt and 100 grams of water. And now, judges. We have a base for our drink, and just as Milton's Gesha, it will taste great. Yet, to reach its full potential, we will elevate the flavors through the tactile as well. First, I'm adding 20 grams of aquafaba, the chickpea water, which works as an emulsifier, so it helps connecting all the ingredients together, which leads to richer texture, and that is what Milton and Elias did to their cherries during the processing. In the next step, I'm blending all the ingredients together for 30 seconds. Aquafaba, which also contains the saponins, will create a foam when mixed with the air, and foam in a drink will lead to much creamier mouthfeel. And taking the time to create better mouthfeel is something that we learned during the roasting of this coffee. In the next step, I'll be changing the drink temperature, which is a major influence on the tactile perception. So I'll be cooling down the drink to approximately seven degrees of Celsius, where I found the best balance between the sweetness and the texture. I'm using a big block of ice to prevent dilution. Cold temperatures increase the drink viscosity, and that makes the mouth feel thicker. And I believe, judges, you can see the connection with my coffee extraction approach here. And finally, I wanted to push the tactile experience even further. One of the main aspects that can affect the tactile is our sensory evaluation, and that can be enhanced as well. Creating a smooth sensation on the lips can affect the tactile of the drink in the same way. And that is why I covered the rim of the glass with the ruby chocolate paint, made from 90% of ruby chocolate and 10% of cocoa butter, which prevents it from excessive melting. I don't want it to change the flavor of a drink, just your tactile perception. And now, judges, let's write down the new experience that we created. You will get notes of kiwi, apricots, and lemongrass, with long-lasting orange blossom aftertaste. It has medium thickness, and the texture is silky and layered. Judges, I will ask you to wait with the tasting until I call time. And after that, please drink it from the side with the chocolate paint. Take a first sip, swirl the glass, and take a second sip. Focusing mainly on the flavor of the coffee can lead us to very interesting, but not so pleasant cups that our customers might not even appreciate. I believe that our main goal as an industry should be making the coffee accessible and understandable to a broader audience. And that is why we should give the coffee tactile more attention. Judges, as you can see, there is still one card left in your deck. And if you allow me to turn it over for you, it represents the most important thing that can create a pleasant experience, and that is hospitality. While we are pushing the boundaries of the coffee flavors, I want you to keep that last card for yourself. As a reminder, not to forget what is the true purpose of being a barista. So judges, thanks a lot for being here. Enjoy time.